afternoon to those of you that are with us. And I, I bet we'll have some other people coming in as um, the time goes on. And what I'm going to suggest, um, actually, Katie, is that we do the pages first. And I hand you the screen to do that. We want to, first place, let me introduce Katie and Rachel. You've met Katie before, Katie Driscoll, um, Overseas, Widening the Circle, Pathways to Friendship Project at the ARC. And it's a collaboration with the Department of Developmental Services. Um, Katie's uh, other day job is with BAMSI <laughs> and involved yes. with planning and strategy and um, a lot of training. And so we're happy to have her uh, leading this team. And Rachel Hayward has joined us and joined the team in widening the circle and pathways to friendships. And, you know, her background is rich in terms of um, connecting people and uh, inclusion, social inclusion, community inclusion, as well as advancing uh, the advocacy of people with disabilities. So we're happy to have her with us as well on the team. So um, what we're going to start with, I'm going to ask before we start the movie, we've got two really cool short movies. One of them actually, uh, the Rachel and Do Jonathan, who's with us. Thanks, Jonathan, for joining us. And, and Rachel will introduce you a little later. It's going to be the second uh, film. But we also have a film from the ARCID School a uh, national project that we decided to join in and collaborate with. And um, there are movies around inclusion and education and awareness for people with disabilities. And the movies are geared at elementary age, middle school age or junior high and high school age. And we picked one to give you a taste and we picked a high school movie called Heart Over Body. And then we also have, as we said, a friendship video uh, to, to play as well. So I'm gonna ask Katie to show a few pages and we'll come back to these. Just give people a sense of where our friendships and social inclusion pages are on the website. And let me make sure that you can share the screen. Uh, and I'll just, just to, I'm sure you can, but just in case I'm gonna make you a co-host. So I believe I was on several months ago sharing our website and it looks different now. It's new and improved. The ARC of Massachusetts launched their, their new website and the Pathways to Friendship program page um, is, has new material and is updated and really accessible. So if you go to the ARC of Massachusetts website under programs, you will see the Pathways to Friendship page, which we are on currently. I'm just gonna give you a quick overview of some of the, the tools and the resources that you can find here. You can learn a bit about the project um, from its onset, a little bit of the history, the importance of friendship, and um, some really great resources as well. So as Leo said, this project is a collaboration between the Department of Developmental Services, the ARC of Massachusetts, and we also have several providers that are currently partnered across the Commonwealth as well. So we really work to widen people's circle and support pathways to friendship in community and really at social inclusion at the highest level by supporting relationships and opportunities for belonging in friendship between people with and without disabilities across our communities. So you can see some of the highlights as I'm scrolling down on the screen. You can see our mantra on the screen that friendships really can occur wherever people live, learn, work, play, and, and organize really um, as far as in terms of um, becoming part of a community organization. So that's really about that belonging piece and membership. So each of the um, phrases you can see accompanies a toolkit. These are available, they're free PDF downloads, and we also do have some hard copies as well if people needed some of those, but they're so rich, there's so much information, and we even have trainings that accompany each one of these toolkits. I'm going to scroll a little bit further, you can see I have a link to the trainer's corner. Again, there's a PowerPoint and a resource guide that aligns with each of these training materials. I want to click on it and see if the screen goes with me. I know sometimes it doesn't in Zoom, but did that go gonna to the... Expect, I'm going to expect it to. I'm going to... Okay. Uh, yeah, let's see. Okay. You might have to go to the trainer's corner to do that, though. It might ask you to download unless you downloaded recently, but see what happens. Did you, you, go to work. Did you no, see the page was, change? No. Okay. That's right. odd. 
Oh, no. So yeah. It, well, hold it. Hold it. Training for parents we're looking at now. Oh, OK. Perfect. So we are in I the trainer's corner. Yeah. OK. All right. Perfect. So we are in the trainer's corner. And again, you can see some of the resources, the training for parents was developed by parents. This is a wonderful curriculum. You can see there's there's different languages accessible and some great resources. This is one that Carrie Mahoney, um, myself, Kathleen Amaral, and some of the team, we've been working closely with family support centers to offer some enhanced training utilizing this curriculum. Friends at school, friends at work, friends where you live. So again, really kind of robust and everything is in there with facilitator notes. So for those of you that offer trainings at your organization, there's some great tools that you could go in and access and really just implement. And the team's always here to also help with some, some coaching around that as well. I'm going to transition back now to the website. So hopefully that jumps back. And, and you just showed them, you know, what we saw was the training for parents. Obviously, all these trainings are different. You know, uh, most of the audience is the, the training for parents uh, is something that Carrie and Kathleen work with you guys on. And then, Teresa, you can go on our website, thearchimast.org, and pick programs and widening the circle and friendships is there. So really simple. WW, well, thearchimast.org and see she's showing it now. If you look up, Katie's showing it. Yep, and we have some of the friendship stories. Those are newly added. And there's information on how to get connected on social media. So we have some um, great videos on building friendships through YouTube. Also, we have a Facebook group. So there's a number of networks that we have that people can really get involved and really to highlight just some of the resources that are available too. So great. encourage people to really dig through, but there's some just great tools on there. Great. And then um, Katie will maybe remind people of the site at the end too, again, but uh, just to show where it is, that, that page. All right. So I am going to start. We promise you some, and these movies are short. Um, really um, hope, you, hope you like them. We're going to go ahead and, and bear with me as I get it started. And, um, and as we get it started, in fact, to get it started... I will enlarge the screen, I promise. Um, but it's interesting. Oh, I know what, what the problem is. I gotta close the share first. Okay. Huh. That is very interesting. Okay, bear with me, folks. I just had the page open and now the page is missing. Uh, that is really very odd. So let me just uh, get this. Oh, you know what? I bet you, well, it's going up. It's, I'm finding it really quickly. So that was really interesting. Okay, I'm at it. So we're going to get it started and then share it as we can hear the sound now. We're going to share it. Heart over body. and I'm 22 years old. Funny story, I wanted to go out for the football team and then the lady that was taking care of me at the time said I couldn't do it. Because I have cerebral palsy and she will be afraid I get old. One bad hit, I would be paralyzed for life. That makes really pissed me off. <laughs> the doctor said I couldn't walk, but I proved them wrong. I'm walking. I was in a braces, crutches, a wheelchair, walker, and a helmet. I got out of those forests before my freshman year.
Oh. How are you enjoying? It's been a while. I know. Pretty good. I'm still here. Yeah. Well, you must be doing well because I haven't seen her. <laughs> well, uh, I'm doing good. You know, entertaining our uh, trip budget. Are you going to come back and help with wrestling? Come back and strong and everything you else. Know yeah. I hate tall, I lived in a foster house until age six. And then my mom, Carol Tiltus, adopted me at age six. And then she passed away from cancer at age 13. And then my mom's best friend, Bonnie, took care of me as her own and funny saw a documentary on TV about a kid with one leg who got a scholarship to wrestle and she thought it was pretty good. So she led me to wrestling. Uh, one thing led to another. I signed up and then my first practice was like a week later. You know, wrestling um, is a sport where, you know, measures hard work, determination, the size of someone's heart, their will, and, and not their physical talents at all. You can just tell that like, Zach was the hardest worker in the room at that point in time. I saw a bunch of kids dropping out of wrestling, but I didn't. I stuck to it because I'm not too quit whatsoever. Zach understands like his predicament and it just seems like, you know, people all his life told him, hey, Zach, you can't do this, you can't do that. And he's just put it behind him and he's kind of embraced it as a challenge. And as a result, he has become the person that he is today because of, you know, people telling him that he can't. Another difficult part of it was balance. I suck at balance. But I didn't care. I liked the sport. I caught a lot of the Special Olympics portion. They didn't have wrestling, which made me mad. So swimming came up. So I signed my name on the dotted line for swimming. I watched, I watched him swim. And I think like every good athlete, every good competitor, he wants it, he wants it more than anything at that time. Uh, he trains like that. I've swam him as hard as I could in an hour, hour and a half practice. And he's tired, he's sore, he's uh, drinking too much water when he's swimming. And so he's pretty worn out and he just doesn't quit. When I swam, I slowly began to love it. We were doing a tiny race to figure out what our times were, and I was racing against this other guy in one of my practices. I smoked him. <laughs> when I won that race, I was like, wow, I can really dig this. So I kept on doing it. I made it to Nationals, my very first year in Special Olympics in Lincoln, Nebraska. I got two silvers and one bronze. The first time I ever met him and actually exchanged, you know, greetings with him, he was working at a high school football game. We didn't have enough people to set the chains and the yard markers and everything. It became a Friday night ritual and I began taking him home and, and you know, feeding him afterwards and uh, kind of grew a friendship from there, I guess. He offered me a position on the baseball team, a managing position, and, you know, I took it. I think any anytime you coach, hard work is something that you preach. And sometimes you need more hard work. What he had to do in life was hard work. His his ability to have to overcome so many things just to be able to put his pants on or to be able to brush his teeth or to be able to make it to the bus stop in time was something that we just took for granted. On my eighth try, 
Zach really helped the team stay focused. Not, not necessarily get focused, but be where we needed to be throughout the course of the game, especially when we got down. I mean, you could look back and Zach would be the only guy talking in the dog. 20. I was like a fan in the dugout. You know, I was cheering for them. I remember it clear as day. Uh, we were playing our coach's old team where he went to high school. And, and Zach got an opportunity to play in it. I pinched, ran from third base to home. But the next guy put a fly ball into the outfield and Zach tagged up and he ran home and he missed home a couple times. We finally got it and that umpire was watching him to make sure he got, got home play before he gave him the run. So that was, that was pretty cool to watch. And everyone cheered. It was awesome. When, when Zach was around, it wasn't so much about wins and losses. It was about effort. And I think that that was something that he, he taught me. I didn't teach him. I, I could count on one hand how many times he actually let me help him do something, whether it was get in my truck or, you know, whatever. And so for him, I, I, you know, I think that he learned how to compete, not through athletics, but through life, because things were always such a struggle for him. But he turned it into a real positive. You know, I, th I actually do think about Zach every, every now and then, especially during games. Um, like when I'm when I'm going out to pitch and it's, you know, the sixth inning or something like that, and I'm getting towards the end of my start. And, you know, I sometimes I hear Zach's chatter from the dugout, you know, just because I was used to hearing it for three or four years or whatever it was. And it, that just doesn't leave you. I, I, I think about it every, every season so far since then. I've been entertaining the idea about maybe being a motivational speaker one of these lifetimes. Look, I also a policy. If I can do it, anyone can do it. Ask uh, Katie and Rachel to start the talk about it first, and uh, the by the way, and we'll talk about how you guys can show these films uh, in your school systems. But uh, wow, huh? Um, you want to? Uh, I I can just say one thing. I remember him talking about his family. I I did I we miss that or? I, I didn't think it was shorter than I remember it, the film. Um, and his, he had a really, we won't get into that. Let's talk about what we saw today, but I, I don't know how that happened, but it, but it, uh, it was moving the way it was. And, and I just want to make one statement about what Zach said. If he can do it, anybody can do it. I don't agree with that. I think we all have our superhero in us. And I think there's things Zach can do other people cannot do, regardless of super palsy or anything else. So, Katie or Rachel and then others, if you want to react to this. Sure. I mean, I, I love this um, story, right? It's a great story about just really being focused and, and you know, all of that, that drive, right? That he, he didn't quit and really redefine in maybe people's perceptions and the expectations that people had and really, you know, exceed in those. I thought, you know, it was a great highlight, too, of... Um, how many interests that somebody can have. And like Leo said, maybe everybody has different interests or different things that they excel in, but there's so many different opportunities uh, dependent on where people's interests um, do lie. So these are, these films there, um, this was a high school one. There's uh, a few others just like this. And this one though, I think really, it just creates that space for conversation 
about understanding and, and really raises awareness. But beyond that, you can really see how belonging was fostered for, for Zach in so many different settings. And, you know, through that was acceptance and friendship. You know, he had so many different roles of value just in that 10 minute clip. And I'm sure there were many more. I know I, I just kind of even highlighted that he was a manager. He was a competitor. He was an athlete. He was a fan. He was a teammate, um, a swimmer, a wrestler, right? There were so many different things. Um, so it just really, I think, uh, taught many lessons and you can see the positive impact that he gave to others in their lives um, by him not only being present at those places, but by being a full participant and really an active contributor. So um, again, I think it's a, a great story and this is just one highlight in their videos that are relevant at each age level. So I think they're great to start a conversation and again, really raise um, not only awareness, but really acceptance and those opportunities uh, for people to have greater contributions and in deeper relationships and roles as well. Yeah, and I've, if I can just add to, to what Katie Please. said, I think you covered a lot of what I, I wanted to say as well, but just highlighting how Zach didn't need to go to specialized programs for all of his interests, right? He was out there in the community doing things with his high school and how it really is. There are these opportunities that already exist there that, um, you know, with some accommodations and the right support that he was able to do. And just the importance of, uh, you know, where we talk about looking at the ordinary and how everybody else does things and that he became a part of it. And because of that, he developed all these relationships and all these supports and was very much a part of his community there. So. Anybody else in the out here before we show our other movie? You want to add anything? And we can talk a little more too after both. The, the next one's only a uh, little over three minutes. Just anybody else? You know, I just want to say again, you know, he's an exceptional adult. Okay simply said, right? And he is uh, someone who's going to be persevering. Not all of us persevere, right? We stop maybe at 6 p.m. You know, we're not going to persevere or he, what do you say, eight times to close the lid on the jar? You know, someone else might stop at six and that's okay, right? That's, you know, they have some other things uh, about them that are unique and, uh, and special. So uh, for all of us as human beings. So all right, let me uh, uh, get the next one. I want to thank Rachel for her work in putting together a bunch of these friendship videos. Thank you, Rachel, for doing that. It, it uh, really enhances what we're trying to do in terms of inclusion and uh, all of that. Thanks for, and Rachel posted where you can see those stories. And I want to ask Jonathan and thank him for being part of it. And we'll get your reaction at the end of the, you know, as we show this, you'll be part of the panel to talk. And you're welcome to talk about anything, by the way. Uh, within reason, <laughs> but uh, look forward to it. So let me go ahead and first uh, now watch that. That'll be missing too now, you know, like the other one was. And I'll have to go back. Oh no, that one's actually uh, under my quick time player. Okay. So, all right, that was easy to get to. I still don't understand why I had to start, you know, get the other one again. Here we go. So let's go to quick time and share that. And then we're going to go big with it in a minute. Actually, is, is that the only thing everyone's seeing right now is the quick time? And I'll try not to mute at all this time, like I did for a second with the other one. That was a bad move. All right, here we go. Me, me and Joy met, met, met and for to a grade at Greenwood Elementary School because I was new and I didn't know anyone and I was looking for someone who I thought was going to be kind and uh, easy to talk to and get along with. And um, that's Jonathan. He's just a good, friendly person. Do, do, I, do, do I move to North Redden at, at the end of fifth grade? Four or five years, we, we, we lost touch. I, I never gave up searching for it. I will look on the white pages on, on the website. 
Um, and finally, I, I found her mother's number. I, I called her one day, and her, her, her mother was surprised when I said, this is Jonathan Spiller, and please tell Joy that I called. She was very happy to give give Joy the message, and then Joy called me, and, and me, I mean, Get back in touch. Yeah, I remember when my mom said to me, she goes, guess who called you today? And she, when she said Jonathan Spiller, I was blown away. I wasn't expecting that answer. And I was so happy that you reached out and we've been in touch ever since. We talk probably every day now. We do try to get together for lunch when we can. I feel like more often than not, we just get a, to chat about our everyday lives. And, you know, we always fill each other in when something happens or if we're worried about something or stressed about something or if we're happy and excited about something. Um, and just the most important thing to him is that we maintain a good friendship, which is very important to me. Some Sometimes I have hard days and enjoy this gives me advice about different things. She she gives me encouragement. Her friendship is a, a, a very important part, part, part of my life. I think that it's really rare that you have a friendship that's, you know, 30 years long and the fact that we we've never had a fight and we've only ever been supportive to each other and we even had that long gap of not talking with each other and we were able to pick up where we left off it's a a, a true friendship yeah. where we really cherish each other for who we are Absolutely. it's important to always be able to have that person to be able to go to who you know will always be positive and have your back and and support you and bring you up. This friendship will, will keep on growing and and growing for, for, for many more years. All right. Um, again, what uh, just touched me again, this story and um, what was really, you know, uh, even more there's a couple of things in it, but I just want to right away, Jonathan, say your persistence and your determination struck me. Uh, I don't know if you want to say something first before Rachel about that, before Rachel jumps in, because I'd love to have Rachel comment too as the person that did it, and then Katie. But go ahead, Jonathan, if you want to. Oh, just got to unmute. Yeah, yeah, you're good. You're unmuted. Um, Maybe you got to raise the volume. Okay, there you go. Yes. So that was something you had to really you 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 did a bunch of work before you could find her. I bet, right? Oh was yes. Um, I I went on not not only white pages online, but um, they 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 used to have phone books. I don't know if they still have phone books, but um, decided to um, work on online first and. I, I remembered what her last name was, so I remembered what her, her mother's first and last name. And I mean, some 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 people don't list their number on white pages, but I I got lucky. Um, I found the number, and I um I first first I, I was nervous um, um about whether I had the right number. I mean, sometimes this um. A few people that have the same name, but I got lucky and I called it and I said, um, "Do I have the right number? Is, is this is this Debbie?" And they said, "This is Debbie." And um, I said, "I said my name and I and I'm trying to um, please tell um, Joy that I called um, and I gave her my email and and my and my number and then a few days later." I heard from Joy, and then we also find each other on, on Facebook, too. Cool. That's great. Rachel, do you want to comment what struck you about the story that you wanted to take? Yeah. With? Well, first, I just want to do a, a general shout out that I, I've had this wonderful task over this past few months to interview various pairs of friends and all, all different types of friendships. But it's always a pair of one person with a disability and the other without. 
and they people have been so gracious to share their stories and really show how it's mutually beneficial for both parties included. This is not one person who's helping the other and without that, it's, it's definitely a two-way street. And with Jonathan and Joy, you could see how much they really, really regard each other and how significant that friendship is for them. You know, something that you preserve since third grade and it's still very much important and they're still very much in each other's lives on a, on a daily, weekly basis. So it's been a lot of fun interviewing them. And um, the other friendship stories are fantastic too and they have a different approach, right? And each friendship is a little bit different and different age ranges too. But I love the story of reconnection with Jonathan and Joy, and it's inc incredibly sincere. <laughs> struck me. Hey, hey, yeah, Katie, do you want to add something? Then we could hear from Jonathan again. John, you know, Katie. Yeah, I mean, I think um, just to highlight, you know, Jonathan, I just you took matters into your own hands, right, and really kind of reached out. And like you said, sometimes that can be nerve wracking to reach out to to someone from the past. But you know, I give you a lot of credit for doing that and how that, you know, has, has reconnected. And I'm sure that was really meaningful, you know, for joy where she got that call and how that has really rebonded your friendship. And, you know, that's one of the strategies that we really highlight is, is reaching out to people from the past, you know, and, and helping people reach out to people from the past, because, you know, there's been some great reconnections like you had with a, a school age friend, you know, sometimes there's an old friend from a neighborhood or an old family friend, or um, someone from a previous workplace or former staff. And oftentimes, you know, people don't think about it unless they're asked. And, you know, when you invite somebody to re-engage or reconnect, it can really, um, you know, re rekindle a relationship. Um, and, and truly the one that you share with Joy over the span of 30 years is something um, truly, truly special. So thank you so much for, for sharing that. And I think it you know, inspires us all to think about, you know, what are sometimes those gaps in our lives, those connections that maybe, you know, were important to us, but life just happened. And, you know, there's <clears> still opportunity to, to reconnect. And there's, there's lots of ways to do that. Um, social media makes it easier. And um, if you could do it through the white pages, then it gives us hope for, for some of our other relationships as well. So thank you. I was thinking, um, you know, you role modeled something for me, Jonathan. I was trying to find, one day I was in this reminiscent mood. I was sort of a part latchkey kid growing up in New York City. And it hit me one day that there was a couple of summers before I was working. And, you know, I think I started working at age 14, but where I went to the ballpark at my junior high, and there was some high school kids, I guess that didn't have to work, but a bunch of us younger kids that would play softball on cement. And it was really some of the most fun times and my parents were psyched that I had something there was a kid who would my classmate who would say hey, sir Kessian come on over why don't you have lunch with me and I bring my lunch with me and uh, you know and his name was Charlie so I did finally find him well I think I found him. that's the problem Jonathan it's the risk that it might not be the right person right it could be the same name and uh, and because he was in a different state I'm thinking oh maybe that's not him so you know what I'm going to do this week I'm actually going to Facebook that person and hope it's the right person and, and see if it is just to thank him. You know, I look back and say, well, what an opportunity that was for me to hang out. And, and no, no question. I had other friends and whatever, but it's just he and I got into the routine and he was the one that gave me the heads up where we lived two blocks from the junior high. Um, you know, and at that point I might've even moved like 10 blocks away further toward Long Island. So I can't remember sort of the timing of that, but so you've given me something to shoot for us. Do you have any, you know, advice for, you know, A, I'm wondering, are there things, times when you've been down and the kinds of advice Joy has given you that, that the friendship has really made a difference for you? Oh, yes. Well, both, both me and Joy and, and my other friends, they have bad days. I, I cheer them up and 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 they 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 cheer, they cheer me up too. Um I I always wish them my friends a happy birthday and they they um wish me a happy birthday too and make 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 me make me smile. Cool. Excellent. Um, so that's another one when people have birthdays, right? That's good advice 
to, to give them, you know, because the older we get, people forget our birthdays, let's face it, right? We're not those sweet little kids anymore. Um, I wonder if anyone, you know, there's some good tips we could get here today while we have them all on, you know, uh, Jonathan, Rachel, uh, Katie, and Carrie's on too. I don't know if somebody, does this sound, are any people in this room feeling like this is hard to believe? How does this happen? Because I can tell you in my life, in my career, I've had people, in fact, I'll tell you this story. I was, you know, hanging out with somebody during a break. I won't say where because it's sort of TMI, but the person was a very good guy. He, he really connected with whether you had a disability or not. He, he clearly had a joy of life and, and connected with folks. And if it was a down day at his program, he would drive people uh, somewhere where they could interact in a, you know, an integrated setting in the community. And he, but he said to me, you know, Leo, do you really believe people, you know, will maintain friendships with people with disabilities, you know, and, and he was focused on intellectual disability, right, which tends to carry the heaviest historical, right, stigma. You could, we could argue about that, but, you know, we won't <laughs> today. We'll just stick with going with that. We'll stipulate to that. And I looked at him and said, yeah, actually I do, you know, and I was sort of blown away because he was so gracious and such a friendly guy. And I knew he, I said, don't, I mean, you, you do it. I said, why are you different? Why am I different? I said, why wouldn't anyone do it if, if they understood what the value is and, and that it's, I think it's just people don't know enough people. I think we just, and let's face it, right? For so many uh, decades, you know, we lived segregated lives, you know? I actually had a, there was a girl in my second grade class who actually had an intellectual disability. This is in the sixties. I still don't know how the parent pulled it off. She was only there for a year and she had some social stuff she needed to work on that related to hygiene. So it wasn't a great situation, but I think with some modest help in that area, she would have fit in fine in our class on a continued basis. And then later in, in, in sixth grade, I remember there was a young man with a significant learning disability that because I was hyperactive and would sometimes talk without raising my hands, I was assigned to be his coach once in a while on reading and stuff. So it kept us both out of trouble. And I remember his name's James. I remember his last name even. And, and we would do that together. Um, but it's something that historically wasn't the case, right? And even today, there's separate schools because sometimes school districts don't do the job they need to do in the school district and families are worried about education. Um, so, you know, how do you break through that? And how do you break through, you know, well, we do, we have to break through that, right? It's not even how do you do it, we know how to do it. And it's connecting people with people um, and, and just being familiar, right? So um, we're Leo, all here can I, can I just add yeah. something? So Jonathan is very much a part of his community and uh, he helps with some of our self-advocate training on friendship building. And he tells this amazing story about this friendship that he formed with his local barber, Ed. And, when, and here's, again, somebody just by being out and connected in their community is able to form relationships. And I don't know, is it okay, Jonathan, do you want to share yeah. just a, a brief overview of what your relationship with Ed? Oh, yes. I, I met my, I met Ed through a mutual friend. That mutual friend pay, paid paid for a, a haircut and beard trim for one, one for above the book my birthday in 2018. Well I remember um, that I met and um, it was December 5th, 2018. And I I bought him some animal magazines that 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 I, I got from another friend. And well he was giving um, me a haircut and beard trim. We were talking about that. I would that I just moved to I, that I, I just moved to 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 the area. Well, I I live I live in I live in Arlington. It's a wonderful town, and I told him the different places that I was exploring and the new places. I mean the new people that I was meeting, and after my heck I'm bear him. I gave him a wonderful review on his Facebook page and he, he got my permission. He, and I said, of course, he could post the pictures of, of my 
on my new haircut and my bad trim on his Facebook and Instagram page, um, pages. I got to know him. And the first time he took me um, to this great restaurant, um, the Town Tavern, he introduced me to the employees and the owner. And then um, another night, um, they had some an, a really nice um, band. Um, they had some, some, some other friends that are in that band. And my parents, um, they, they went um, to the Town Tavern and I introduced Ed to my parents. And um, in 2019, I, I won 19 sweet tickets to the Celtics from Kiss 108. I took Ed and his family and many of my friends in the neighborhood. And um, we, we have a new tradition. Once a month, I see Ed for my haircut and beard trim. And at 9 a.m., he takes me out to breakfast at the Arlington Diner. And then, and then I see him. And he um, always um, posts the pictures saying, this is, this is Jonathan, a very kind and a very friendly guy. And, that, and he's, I spread kindness um, all around my, my neighborhood. And uh, some people call me the mayor of Arlington because I know like um, so, so many people. Thank you for sharing that. I love the mayor of Arlington. We use that line a lot for friends and certain folks we know. So uh, glad to know you, you were proudly. Um, that's, that's a great story. Um, I want to comment on something Lisa put in the chat about her son going out of district school. So friendships in general for her son are tougher, right? Because even people he goes to school with because they're out of district, it's tough to get kids together. But um, Rachel, Katie, I, I think there's probably after school stuff that maybe to think about one activity to, he could get involved in and that it fits him, you know, that works for him. And then um, that could lead to right a relationship. Yeah, certainly some of those extracurricular activities, you know, clubs and different things like that, that, that can help expand that relationship. Um, you know, and, and sometimes too, even if there isn't a club that is of interest, sometimes schools, you do have the opportunity to start a club, you know, and so that can enhance within those classmates. It, it is a challenge when you're not, you know, in that same neighborhood, but also, you know, look in, as, as Rachel said, maybe to the ordinary, as far as outside of school, what are some of the other kids in the community doing within that town? Um, because the closer you are to home, the, the more likely you have the proximity to spend time and, and see people uh, regularly and build some of those relationships. So exploring the neighborhood, looking for different places that um, people can get involved in and, and build some of that um, opportunity to deepen those relationships. And as Jonathan has taught us, it's so important to, to ask and make invitations. Um, so, you know, sometimes we do, we have to put ourselves out there and um, even, you know, if there's an acquaintanceship with someone like a barber, you never know how that can turn into a relationship where you have these traditions and these wonderful experiences, so. And sometimes parents with kids have to do that, right? Um, they, uh, and then, and Teresa, a great point. There's still access to hometown school activities. That's a great point as well, if they add to what Katie just said. Um, I, I was gonna, there was something on the tip of my tongue related to that. And of course, I lost it. Um, but I think this is, you know, it's, it's great to have uh, role modeling again, Jonathan. It's really, Oh, on invitations. Yeah, you take the risk, take the risk of rejection. And, you know, but, and, and all of us have faced rejection, let's face it. So, um, it, you know, but the flip side of that is, you know, eventually the odds are with you that there's going to be an acceptance. And uh, so, and then, you know, sometimes a no is really not a no. Maybe it's, maybe somebody would said too, that eventually, you know, it turns out the hardest people to connect to. Uh, become people you have stronger bonds to. That's true with group formation. And then finally, one, one more thing that I found what I lost. One of the uh, parent that was a leader in my organization also worked with us for a while. She said how she would look at extended family and in the family gatherings. And, and she would just watch the interaction. And she would watch which cousin seemed to like connect the most with one of her three kids who had a, happened to have a disability. And then that was what you know, she found like there was two or three that where there was connections on some level. 
And one of them's turned out to be a lifelong connection. And he goes there every few months for dinner with the family. And it's really cool. It's, it's so there's, you know, you just don't know. Um, so uh, anyway, I'm going to bring this to a close unless there's something really pressing somebody wants to raise and, and I am going to ask. Yeah, just just one thing that I mean, Jonathan is amazing in his outgoingness um, and not all of us are like that, right? Or disability or not disability. I'm, I'm, I'm not an extrovert in that same way. And um, that's where, you know, Leo just mentioned in passing that sometimes you need to be the one to initiate that. Um, and that's okay, right? That still really works. So it doesn't make a difference who does the initiation, whether it's Jonathan himself is able to, or somebody who supports him, just making Good that initial connection and, and bringing it there. Um, because, uh, you know, Jonathan's fantastic, but I know that I, I wouldn't be nervous <laughs> going up to people. So sometimes you need right. that extra help there. And I gave I, my example. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, Jonathan. Thank, I would like to thank um, Rachel Hayward and Kenny Driscoll. And th thank you very much, Rio, for inviting me today to re, re arrive. Um, it, it, it was, um, it's great to meet you and and Kate, Katie um, on, on, on Zoom um, hopes hope someday I, I meet I can meet you and in person and everyone too. Thank you, Jonathan. And of course, what a pleasure to have you with us today. Really appreciate you making the time. Um, we're not going to tell you about what's coming up, but you can go on our website, right, Carrie, and we can go to webinars and under programs and see what's coming up. And uh, yes. Katie posted the Watch and Learn series comes with resource guides and questions for classroom discussion. That's for the ARC at school. So Kay Amaral at arcmass.org or Driscoll at arcmass.org. And, you know, look forward to some of you, if you want to do that with your classroom you, you or and or you want to share it with the school in your neighborhood, let us know and uh, we'll put it together for you. Okay. And everybody have a great week. Thank you again, Jonathan, Rachel, Katie, and um, have a great week. Look forward to next week. And next week, we're going to have the ombudsman from uh, our friends from the Disability Policy Collaborative. And uh, is it consortium or collaborative? Okay, I got it confused with the federal one that we have with the ARC and the national organizations. It's the same initials, but they're going to be over. They have the ombudsman's program from Mass Health, all of Mass Health. And uh, I'm really looking forward to their participation. And uh, we'll get the notice out on that soon. So that's next week. All right. And we're going to have this up in a few days, I hope, or Monday at the latest. And we're going to really advertise the heck out of this, Jonathan. So because I really think um, it's, it's a really valuable uh, session today. Thank you. All right. Take care, everybody. Have a great week. Thank you. Take care.